everyone. Welcome back to What You're Watching. I'm Bo. And I'm Jamie. And this is the only show that dares ask the question, hey, Jamie, what you watching? But before you answer that question, it is a special episode of What You're Watching with Jamie Ooh, and Bo. Is it a very special episode? Uh, it depends on any, if anyone Do learns a lesson. we need to have lesson. our parents in the room? Yes, you're probably after this episode. You're probably going to want to have a discussion with your parent or legal guardian about, uh, yeah, I don't know, sex stuff, maybe. Uh, well, sure, yeah. Uh, or you know, weird people who own bicycle shops. I was a oh man. See, this is what happens when we're virtually the same age. Right. We have all the same jokes and references. Yeah. <laughs> Kids, look up Bicycle Shop special episode if you want to uh, learn more about uh, how the world moves uh, to the beat of more than one drum. Uh, like, I just, uh, nice. That was nice. I just trust that when I sent that meme as a response to you, that you <laughs> that you got what I meant. Oh, sure. Yeah. But no, no, it's not that kind of episode. What it is... Um, is we both do our top 10 horror movies of, of the year. Both of us have assembled lists. And and what kind of gave me this idea is I saw that, and, and forgive me because I will screw up the name of the show in a heartbeat. It's Horror in the House of Salmons? Yes. Or the hor- okay. Because I keep always doubt, like, is it Horror in the House of Salmons or the Horror House of Salmons? Horror House of Salmons. No, that would actually make sense. I can see that, yeah. And it is, it, but I li- I think Horror in the House of Salmons is better anyway. Thank you. So, but I also was like, well, do I think it's better because that's the real title? Or because <laughs> I have secretly changed the name of their show to match the reality that I prefer? Um, so I'm glad I got it right. Anyway, so you guys did your top 10 list and I was about to listen to that episode and I was like, oh wait, actually I don't want to listen to that because I would rather on our show do a little crisscross and see, see what, what we, we picked. And so I figured the way we will do this is we'll start at number 10, work our way up to number one. And if... If the movie is on both of our lists, we'll we'll kind of mention it there. But um, so I would say let's begin with you uh, at number ten, and then away we go. I think this is going to be fun. I'm very excited about this. Okay, I am too. Actually, I'm curious to see uh, what you have, and I'm also curious to see if I'm going to get any shit from you, like I did from Brian. But <laughs> okay, probably. Um, I will say though <laughs> what um, what I find, and I've gotten some feedback, um, mm-hmm. specifically Dave Z, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> regarding top ten lists that people do, mm-hmm. and he really hates it when people give away what's on their lists ahead. Like if I say have something at number eight, but you have it at number three, and if I mention mine at number eight, and you were to go, oh well, that's number three on my list, he considers that a spoiler. And it hurts his feelings. All right, so. Well, he's going to hate this episode then because I don't give a shit. <laughs> okay, it just means. Dave, it, I tried. It, it, yeah, no, it just means we'll talk about the movie at that point. And then, like, for example, if your number 10 is my number three, we'll talk about the movie. And then when we get to number three, I'll be like, okay, that's obviously that's my number three. And we've talked about it. Oh, yeah. Okay. That, yeah, that's no problem. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I will shit if my number 10 is your number three. There is no way in hell. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's let's get right to it. Okay. My number 10. <laughs> I'm actually kind of trepidatious about this. My number 10 is Wrong Turn. Oh, okay. Did you see the new Wrong I, Turn? I did see that. It did not make my, my top 10 list, but it was it was on my consideration list. And just kept getting kind of pushed down and down and down as I watched yeah, other stuff. And then eventually fell off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I were putting together a top 20, it might make my top 20. Um, but yeah, I thought it uh, I, I thought it was interesting. It definitely does something different, but it's not my pick, it's your pick. I'll shut up. Well, no, I mean, that's really it. It it's very different from the wrong turns that we've gotten before. And I think that it was just I don't know, I think it was a smart move, you know, going back. Uh, same guy, 
mm-hmm. you know, um, going back to the well. And instead of remaking what he had already done, he went in a totally different direction. And honestly, I have a lot of time for the direction that he went. And I really enjoyed it. Plus, it kind of was surprising because I didn't really know that much about it going in. I just knew that it was a new wrong turn. And I was like, okay, well, then when we got into it, I'm like, wow, this is totally different. So it was a pleasant surprise. And I, I don't know, I really dug it, you know, brutal when it needed to be brutal and, and a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I think that the direction is a little clumsy at times. Um, but I will say, I kind of wish the whole movie had been the last bit leading into the credits. You know okay. what I mean? Uh, yes. like, like, and I won't spoil what happens at the end of the movie. Cause I do that. I think it is certainly an interesting take on the material. And I'm glad that it wasn't just like, it's wrong turn, only different actors, you know? Right. <laughs> and so it, it does, it definitely does something different. It's definitely uh, brutal at times. Um, but I like the idea of the ending more than I kind of like some of the stuff in the middle, but it, but it was, it was interesting. Like I had a good time with it. I know a lot of people, uh, really hated the fact that it was so divergent from the original film, but that's what I liked about it. So I think that's a great number 10. Uh, Also, I think it kind of, you know, dipped its toes in the water of full core Mm -hmm. and I am all about that. So yeah, I was extra happy about it. And I did, yeah, I've heard a lot of grumbling about it uh, over the past year, or I think it came out in like April or so. I don't even remember, but it was kind of earlier in the year. Yeah. And yeah, I've heard a lot of grumbling about it, but I was always, I, I liked it. And honestly, I didn't expect it to make my list. But then when I was really kind of whittling down, I'm like, you know what? No, I, I, I really do respect that. And I enjoyed it a lot. So that's why it's my number 10. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, it's the reason that I I liked probably more than most people that knew Matrix movies. Oh, we haven't watched it yet, but I we are going to. We just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, it is not spoilers to say that it definitely, the first half hour of it in particular, kind of takes the piss out of the idea of like, why would you do a sequel to The Matrix? Mm, okay. And but I I kind of like that about it, and I know a lot of people were like, it, and it's got its problems. I'm not saying it's a great movie. I'm saying that I like the fact that it did something kind of interesting with the idea, as opposed to uh, another movie that I haven't seen. So I'm just talking out my ass. But something like Ghostbusters Afterlife, where it's like, oh, we're gonna make a movie where you know Bill Murray shows up to a first date with a bunch of Thorazine a warm-hearted family film. (laughs) And I'm like, eh, I don't know that I'm interested in that because that's not what I think of when I think of Ghostbusters. I think of laughing a lot (laughs) and not not necessarily feeling warm fuzzies. Um, That's true. I will ask this. As far as the new Matrix, and I know this is diverging from what we're doing, but uh, Mm -hmm. just real quick. Does it feel like... uh, like watching John Wick's and John John Wick's uh, John Wick in the Matrix because that's what I'm afraid of. No, is no, that, no, no, um, it definitely not. Okay, definitely okay. not. Um, right. that, I mean, just because new, I mean, older Keanu Reeves is to me very different from younger Keanu Reeves, and I, I don't know if I'm going to have difficulty putting him back in that role. Um, yeah, talk to me after you've seen it. Cause I, okay. no, I don't think that at no point when, when I was watching it, did I think this is like John Wick. Okay. It, it was, uh, you know, like I thought a lot of things, but never that. Okay. Uh, um, okay. My number 10 is a uh, censor. Okay. Yeah. That one did not make my list. It was very close. It was on my, uh, I want to say it was in my top. 15 and it was very close uh the only issue i had with that one was uh, kind of like the very end but i really love the setup and the premise but again your movie so <laughs> well, yeah for sure and in like the very end of the movie works for me because i like the fact that like the the aspect ratio keeps shrinking and shrinking until you're kind of in that movie and i th- yeah it's very artsy fartsy 
Um, the lead actress, uh, Neam Algar, I think is terrific in it. Um, and I just like the fact that it, like, it takes this, that central mystery of what happened to her sister and like th there is a conversation happening inside the movie about the value of violence in a movie. And then when the movie gets violent, it gets fucking crazy violent. And I kind of yeah. like that. So, um, yeah. Also, who's the, what's the guy's name that is always in the Ben Wheatley movies? Um, Reese Shearsmith. No. Okay. <laughs> the big face guy. Um, oh, 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 uh, hang on. Uh, I feel horrible calling him that, but you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll look up his... <laughs> he was in Kill List. And, right. Uh, and I will, his... uh, I will get his name as we're talking, but yeah, I thought, um... I can I, always remember his name. I can't believe I forgot. Um, but yeah, I really liked him. I thought he did a really good Michael thing. Smiley is that yes. guy's name. Yeah. Yes. He yes, he's very good. Um yeah, I just think it's it, it it's a super interesting movie and there are a couple of of those on my list where I'm like I don't know that this outright scares me or anything, but it it's a movie that I thought about a lot after I saw it. Yeah, I really really enjoyed it. All right, what's your uh, your number 9? Okay, my number nine is one that I don't ever hear anyone talk about. It was an earlier film this year, and I actually think it was the first movie I watched in 2021, and that is Bloody Hell. I don't know if I've seen Did that. Did you see that one? Uh, it's really, really good. It's got some humor. It's got some horror, and um, but the the basics of it is this guy ends up in a foreign country in the basement of this whacked out family kind of hanging from the ceiling and he's trying to figure out why he's there, what they're planning to do and how to get out. And it's, uh, it's just, it's really, really fun. I highly recommend it for anyone out there who hasn't seen it. And I want to say that's probably a lot because like I said, I've heard no one talk about it, hmm. but yeah, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I totally uh, miss me. Um, so yeah, I will, uh, uh, I will have to check that out. That looks really interesting. Um, okay. Um, all right. I like this. I like to two, di two totally different lists so far. So, yeah, this is fun. Uh, number nine for me is The Medium, which is the semi-found footage film from the guy who directed Shudder, Bonjong Pesentanakan. I think is how you pronounce his last name, or it's close. That's a lot of syllables in that. It is. Name. It is. <laughs> Uh, and if you haven't seen The Medium, The Medium is a movie that starts off feeling like this could almost be an Oscar film, uh, where it's like a documentary crew following this woman named Nim, who is like, hey, I'm, I, I, at an early age, I was touched by this local spirit that, you know, I perform healings and prayers and things like that and she's very like down to earth in fact uh the documentary crew is like well what if somebody comes to you with cancer and she says well i tell them if you've come to me to help treat your cancer you're probably gonna die you need to go see a doctor i do things that are spiritual you know i'm not i'm not here to heal <laughs> physical ailments i'm here to like g again give blessings and stuff like that and and uh, so there's some family strife where her sister, as it happens, was originally going to be, seemed to have been tapped to be the, the shaman of the village, but she basically denied the honor and it fell to the older sister, Nim, or the younger sister, Nim, sorry. And, but her daughter is now exhibiting some of these same symptoms, only Nim is like, I don't think that's a good spirit. I think your daughter is, is being hounded by a dark spirit, in fact. And so it, again, it uses this kind of not found footage style. It's just more of a mockumentary style to make that distinction, uh, to chronicle this younger girl becoming absolutely horrifying. And, and like it builds and builds until the end of the movie is just fucking bonkers. And I love it. The medium is it, like, it's one of the, the movies on my list. That's like, Oh, this will scare the shit out of you. Like the last 20, 30 minutes of this are genuinely terrifying. Ah, uh, man. I, I've heard nothing but good things about that film and I haven't seen it, 
And I wanted to. That, that was one of the movies I wanted to try to squeeze in before my end of the year. And it's so stupid, the reason that I didn't. But it's uh, it's just a very practical... I have not been able to watch a lot of subtitled films mm -hmm. recently because my eyesight is so bad that it takes me forever to focus on the words. And I end up like, it's just a, a really just not fun experience for mm -hmm. me. And then on top of that, when I was trying to do that, I was, uh, we were both sick, like really sick toward the end of the year. And I just especially couldn't try to do it. And it really disappointed me because I knew that it was going to be something that I would love. And I guarantee I will. And I feel like when I do get to watch it, I'm going to like be upset because it probably would make my list. But um, like one, uh, Dave has been a champion of that film quite a bit. And I really, really want to see it. I just, I just couldn't. And that sounds so lame. I know, but I really, it's sad. I've had to miss out on several subtitled films this year that I've wanted to see just because it's hard for me to do. And eventually I have to go to the, I have to get new glasses and until I do, it's just really hard for me to do. So yeah. it, it, once you catch up to it, even if you, if you ever run into a situation where you can even watch it dubbed or something, I know that's not ideal, but it, it, it's not, but I've been having to do that some this year. If I, if it's available, I'll yeah. do it just to get to see the movie. Yeah, and by the end of it, it don't matter what anybody's saying. It's just like, what the fuck is happening? What the fuck is happening? <laughs> it's it, it's it's quite good. I'm I'm a I big am fan excited of it. to see it. I I really am. So that's cool. And so hearing that from you just makes me want to see it that much harder. Well, and also I I really love the fact that the guy who did Shutter, which is, I think has one of the scariest endings of any movie I've ever seen in my life, um, that the he was like oh yeah, yeah what if i do that only like for 15 20 minutes where it's just wow. ramping up the terror and oh more and more and more and oh like, i don't want to spoil any of it but like there's some shit that goes down the last you know 15 minutes or so of that movie that's like you know i didn't think it was gonna take this turn but i'm glad it did well uh, that's that actually makes me even more excited too because shutter is uh, I don't think it's been unseated yet as my favorite Asian film. And uh, as far as being scary, yeah. you know, um, I actually probably enjoy watching something like Train to Busan more because I get more emotionally involved. But Shudder is genuinely scary to me. Like it freaks me out. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first time I saw that movie years ago, it just blew me away. And I'm like, oh, the, nothing has ever come close to this as far as, far as scaring me. So uh, I'm really interested to see something by the same guy. Yeah, it's good shit. You'll, you'll enjoy it. I think it's produced by the people who did The Wailing as well. So, oh, like, another good one. Yeah, okay. it, like the, the, uh, the, the sort of heritage of the movie, the, uh, the credentials of the movie are kind of beyond reproach. And, and there are moments like, and it's two hours plus, it's like two ten, something like that. And there are moments where you're like, is this going to get to being a horror movie at some point? And, uh, and then it does. And then it totally <laughs> does. Yeah. Cause it, but it, it the, 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 the padding to get there is worth it because you get some really nice payoffs later on as far as like, Oh, okay. Well, there's a lot more happening under the hood of this movie. Like, uh, whereas Shudder is sort of about, you know, uh, elements of misogyny and things like that and uh, that sort of thing. This just gets deeper into sort of the secrets uh, that families keep and things like that. It, it's, it's quite good. So, anyway, definitely see the medium. Uh, what's your number eight? My number eight is Jacob's Wife. Oh, for sure. Yeah, did not make my list, but totally, totally reasonable pick for the top 10. Yeah, uh, Barbara Crampton, it was, to me, really nice to see her in a lead role again. Uh, I feel like she's been coming back hard and heavy into horror over the last several years, but you don't often see her in a lead role. She usually just kind of pops in and does something here and there, or she's kind of like in the background, um, like with your next Mm -hmm. You know, but with this one, she is front and center the entire time. She is stunning, which 
uh, Brian and I uh, on our show joke that, uh, well, he jokes and, and I agree that uh, we think she might actually be a vampire because <laughs> like nothing else will explain how amazing she looks in her 60s. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I just, I love the story. I And I love Larry Fessenden too. Um, he just, uh, he always makes me happy um, just seeing him and he always cracks me up. And I, I don't know. I really, I, I, I felt that. I, I, I felt what she was feeling, and I think it was a really good way to to get across how uh, how a lot of times, you know, you lose a passion in your marriage, and and you uh, basically, as you get on in life, if you have. If you, you know, sometimes people can start to think, you know, am I in the, am I doing the right thing? Am I, am I where I want to be? Would I be happier doing something else? You know, and that is, that's a horrible feeling, you know, Mm -hmm. but I like the way that they approach that here. And then uh, there are, without spoiling, there are um, some nice moments at the very, very end where we see the master and I, I just really dug the turn they took with that uh, as far as who the master is and the look of it too. Cause it's, it kind of is a callback to something that horror fans will be very familiar with. And then they kind of turn it on its head. And I don't know. I was all about that movie. I just thought it was fantastic. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, it, it's the best role she's had in almost 40 years. Um, so yeah, it, a very yeah. good film. Very good film. Uh, number eight for me is The Vigil. <gasps> Yay. You okay? Uh, yeah, I just love that movie. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, so that is, uh, writer-director Keith Thomas, who is about to do the Firestarter remake, or is doing the Firestarter remake, uh, which I think is a terrific pick, because The Vigil fucking rules. Um, it is oh, yeah. genuinely scary. Um, but I, I was talking about this with, uh, Duncan today. In fact, I had mentioned the movie and then he watched it and it ended up on his top 20. Nice. Um, and I like the fact that down to the monster of the movie, the whole thing is about the, how poisonous it is to hang on to, um, kind of regret. Yes. And everything about the movie is about that. You know, all the performances are about that. All the characters are about that. The monster is about that. It is Mm -hmm. just such a great uh, example of how you can make a theme work in a horror movie without it ever getting in the way of the story. Like, it doesn't ever get on a soapbox about it. That's just totally what the movie is about. Yeah, it's ever-present but I don't feel like they hammer it into your skull. It just, they make it very clear to you. But at the same time, I love that this is all about Jewish lore. Mm -hmm. And that is not something that you see very often in mainstream horror films. You know, we have, you know, a couple here and there, but I, I always love it when we can go outside the usual, you know, we have so many movies that are based on Christianity And I enjoy it when we can, you know, dip outside of that and see something different. This, I think, is an excellent example. It is, like you said, genuinely scary, I think. And the the lead that we spend every minute with, I I just, I I enjoy his performance so much. Mm -hmm. And they do such good work with light and shadow and uh, just freaky freaky stuff so yeah that is definitely worthy and we actually have our first double because this is my number seven. Oh, right on okay well uh i don't have to ask you what your number seven is then um but yeah terrific movie i'm glad we both and we kind of have it near the same spot on the list even yeah very nice and that's the that's the first time we've we both had the same movie so that's cool all right, well, here's one we are definitely going to have in common because it's a movie you recommended to me. Oh. So okay. uh, my number seven, then, is The Night House. Oh, okay. That's cool because when I talked to you about it, 
I wasn't sure. I was actually kind of thinking about this after we decided to do the top 10 thing. I was like, oh, I wonder if that's going to be there. Just because I remember when we talked about it, I couldn't quite tell. I knew that you liked it, mm-hmm. but I didn't know how much. So I was curious to see if it was going to make it. Yeah, no, a terrific movie. Uh, you know, uh, we th- we've talked about this a, a bit in depth, uh, so I won't rehash all of that. Like, I've got my little nits to pick with the movie, but it's hard to complain when you're talking about, like, a terrific pr- central performance from Rebecca Hall. And it's genuinely spooky. Like, it's a good ghost story. I agree, uh, yeah. So that is my... That bumps us all the way up to uh, to number six for six. you. Yes. Uh, my number six is Last Night in Soho. Oh, I still haven't seen it yet. I love it so much. Um, Anya Taylor-Joy is fantastic, as always. Mm. Matt Smith is fantastic, as always. And um, Mackenzie, or Thomas and Mackenzie, mm-hmm. is, she's just, she's just adorable, and her performance is right. So many, I, I feel like so many of the films that are on my list this year are performance led. And that's probably true of every year, but I just seem to notice it this year that it, just about every movie I, I end up talking about the performances. And this one is just incredible. And then Edgar Wright's use of music and lighting, his his portrayal of 1960s London. Um, oh, and Diana Rigg. Yeah. In her final role, it's and uh, Terrence Stamp as well. So, I, yeah, it, it's just it's great. I definitely recommend it. I, you should definitely see it. I I absolutely will. In fact, I might uh, non zero odds. I'll watch it tonight. Um, all right. Well, my number six is Psycho Goreman. Which I never saw it. Yeah, that is a movie that when people tell me they did not like it, I'm like, ah, I get it. That is that's not an incorrect reaction to that movie, but uh, you know, if you want to watch Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on LSD, then uh, may I suggest Psycho Gorman to you. Um, it is a terrific movie. It does not have a single likable character in it. Uh, but that is the point uh, of like what would happen if a murderous galactic monster uh, came under the thrall of a precocious and selfish preteen girl that will use him totally for selfish reasons. And as soon as I heard that description, I was like, this mo- sounds like a movie for me. And then I watched it and it was 100% a movie for me. And um uh, Stephen Kaczynski also did like The Void and uh, Father's Day. Like he's got a, a really interesting, diverse list of movies, and this is, I think, by far, if not his silliest, certainly up there. But I loved everything about it. I think I think Psycho Gorman is a delight. You know, I've heard really only good things about it. I think maybe one or two people were not high on it. Um, oh, <laughs> Sorry. Easy. I uh, still have the remnants of my illness hanging on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it just never appealed to me. And I don't often like kid-centric films. Mm-hmm. And I'm not always in the mood for silly and that's just kind of what I got from it was that it was going to be a little on the sillier side and I just haven't been feeling it, but eventually I'll probably see it, but it just, I don't know. It, I keep hearing, I kept hearing people talk about it all year long. Everybody was just all over this movie and I was just like, I really don't, I just don't want to, like, yeah, <laughs> I just it, didn't want to see it. For someone who does not really enjoy Evil Dead 2 okay yeah you, you know, know me. <laughs> uh, right imagine if you removed more of the horror elements and inserted more bizarre shit okay and, removed even more yes <laughs> okay, so then, so that it, it's still super gory but it's also incredibly so like it, it's you know you can make the argument it's more comedy than horror but it, it, it just traffics so much in the world of horror that it, it's hard not to call it that 
Because yeah, like you I couldn't you couldn't just like if somebody was like I'm in the mood for a good comedy, you still couldn't recommend this movie because it's like okay, how do you feel about people's spines being ripped out? Because that's going to happen in this movie. Uh, but it, even that is very silly, and so and like all the 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 characters are again that kind of you know super sentai sort of puppets or not puppets but kind of costumes and stuff and it, it's really well done but it's still like oh these are just people in rubber outfits and but it mm. it doesn't try to hide the fact that they're in rubber outfits that it like it's kind of celebrating that so anyway it's it's really good like there are there are so many people who love the void and i was like ah uh, i'm not there i don't think the void is that great and then you know the next year or two years later, he comes out with Psycho Gorman. And I'm like, now you got me. Now you got me, you bastard Kostansky. Well, you know, as um, as much as I do like The Void, I'm not as high on it as a lot of people are. Brian is like, well, you know, I mean, it just it uh, fits that that Brian would love that film. Sure. It's right in his wheelhouse. And I'm typically on board with that stuff and i do really like it but i just didn't like it didn't make my list the year it came out mm -hmm. and it wasn't that i didn't like it it just i wasn't over the moon for it you know so i don't know i mean eventually i will give it a shot i just haven't been feeling it this year but i i think it's one of those movies that i'll just get around to at one point yeah for for sure and i'll be curious uh, like there is a 80% chance that you really won't like it, but I'm still curious. So, okay. well, uh, I'll make sure to let you know. What about your number five? My number five is Caveat. Oh, right on. Okay. And I just, I love that film. I, I love that little bunny. I want that bunny. That bunny's a good boy. He's a good boy. And, you know, at first when you see him, you think he, you know, it's a, uh, he's like a scary thing but then you find out what he's actually doing and he's a good boy and i i just there is a like a particular sequence toward the end of that film that really affected me and i was all about it now the setup is kind of interesting in that this guy is like in order to get some money he's gonna go watch this crazy chick you know on this island yeah in this you know isolated house oh and then by the way you have to wear this harness and be chained to the house you know, fucking what? No. Uh, but uh, uh, but then, you know, you kind of accept that and move past that. And then I think it's definitely worth your time. Uh, that was one that I recommended to Kate that she watched for her end of the year list. And <laughs> as she often does when she's watching something, because she always watches things late at night. Mm -hmm. She, uh, well, late at night for her, which is usually early evening for me. And uh, she started, you know, she was sending me messages and she's just like, <laughs> I mean, she, I just love the shit out of her. She's so funny. Like one of her, that bunny could fuck right off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then she was, you know, the new place. She just recently moved and the wind is howling around outside. And she's up like at three o'clock in the morning watching this all by herself. <laughs> so it was fantastic. But uh, yeah, I think it's really effective. I loved it a lot. I know a lot of people feel like I've even I've seen people refer to it as unfinished, um, like they they weren't I guess satisfied with with how it came out. And I though I really I was okay with it. You know I I like what we got. Yeah, I think it's great. I I, I again was might have been my in my top twenty. Um, I thought it had some genuinely creepy moments, and yeah, it's it, it it's a solid horror film, no doubt about it. Okay, what's your number five? My number five is uh, Saint Maud. Okay, uh, totally worthy. Yes, uh, which is very quiet. It, it's very unassuming. Um, and you, what I like about the movie is that it kind of trickles out the exposition in a way that you're it, like you get one encounter on the street with a coworker that totally recontextualizes the movie in a very quick moment you're like what's going on now like what i i know there was an issue at her previous job but her name ain't maud what's going on <laughs> and like the, when you get to the resolution of the movie and 
you know, understand kind of what all of this has been about, um, I think it's genuinely affecting. I mean, it's one of those movies, like, I'll never forget the end of. No, no. Oh, it definitely leaves an indelible impression. And honestly, it probably should have made my list. And the only reason it didn't is Duncan's fault. And um, that's because we covered it for 2019 in the summer series. So when I came around to making my list for this, I forgot about it because Mm -hmm. I've, you know, I've talked about it as of two years ago. I mean, it was just this past year, but, you know, uh, and we, it was categorized as 2019 because, you know, how he does this whole uh, country of origin thing. And it just slipped my mind that it actually came out here or, or in wide release this year. So that's really the only reason it didn't make my list is because uh, Duncan. So blame him. But mm-hmm. uh, it, it is definitely worthy. It, it's an excellent film. And anybody out there who hasn't seen it, I would recommend it. Yeah. Um, what about your number four? My number four, I think we talked about it. I'm pretty sure we talked about it on one of our episodes. And that is The Deep House. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did not make and, my top ten, but yes, I get it. And I get, and I understand. I mean, I get why. I, I honestly don't expect it to necessarily make a lot of top ten lists because it's a very simple story. It's basically a haunted house underwater. You know, uh, there's not a whole lot to it. I just was really impressed. Um, this was the movie where I turned to Brian and while we were watching. I'm like, I'm so happy I'm watching this right now mm-hmm. uh, because uh, Bustillo and Maori, I am a fan of. And they don't always blow me away. Um, you know, Kandisha, which also they did this year, was very good, but didn't make my list. But it, I think that they are technically excellent filmmakers. You know, they, I, I don't think that they've ever made a technically bad film. It, and I, but I don't love them all as much as I love, say, Inside. This one, though, with the, their use of color, their use of lighting, their use of music, uh, I really was in love with the way they used the music in this film. And it was just very simple things. Like when we come across what's in the basement um, and then they start moving, uh, <laughs> that was just crawling all over me. Mm-hmm. So it, it, uh, it worked. It, it worked for me and I think it looked phenomenal. So yeah, it, uh, that was a really nice, that was a later film for me this year. And it, I was really pleasantly surprised by what I got. Yeah. It, yes, it is very, very pure in what it is trying to accomplish, and and I think it, it does a good job accomplishing it. I think when we talked about this, my, my problem with that movie is still that I just, I wasn't totally down with the end of the movie. Oh, right. And yeah, 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 because it, it could have gone either way. Yeah, and I and... get it. It's just, it, that's not what I'm looking at. And also, like, it was, uh, again, if I were doing a top 20, it would probably be on the top 20. But it was just, like, there were other movies that were more substantial than The Deep House. Like, The Deep House has some really good scares, but that's kind of it. Yeah, and, and honestly, it's here solely for technical prowess. Like, yeah. it, it doesn't have deep themes you know, it doesn't explore anything, you know, intellectual or, or like deep seatedly scary. This basically just taps into the very primordial uh, you know, bits, you know, where it's just like the reason that people hunker down in caves, you know, not or the ancient man would hunker down in a cave if he was afraid. Like it, it's not uh, it's it doesn't have anything philosophical to say. And mm-hmm. that's fine. Um but it just did what it did so well. And it worked especially well for me that I guess what it is, is it's so difficult sometimes to find something that really taps into those fears. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I'm looking for. Uh, That's I'm all, I'm constantly on, on the search for something to scare me and things do scare me. You know, we've talked about that before, you know, um, things I am, it's not like I'm difficult to scare. It's just that they, um, there will be a lot there. There could be a really excellent film that just, it has a lot to say and it's amazing, but it doesn't scare me. This one effectively scared me. And so that it impressed me. So, 
Yeah, uh, right. Hard to argue. Uh, a, a really solid pick. Um, my number four is Candyman. Speaking of remakes. Um, <laughs> and Candyman, I think, is uh, much like Wrong Turn. It's like, okay, well, how do you remake a movie that is so beloved? Um, well, what if you don't really make it a remake? What if it's kind of a sequel but also deals with an extension of the ideas that the first one dealt with, where the first one was much more about like gentrification and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. What if, what if you instead tackle themes that people are talking about currently, which is what about that, you know, now gentrified community that is still making monsters out of the black people that live there. And uh, I, I thought it was genuinely creepy at times and really impactful. You know, like, th th <laughs> this is one of those movies that has a lot to say, but I don't think that ever got in the way of just telling the story of the movie, even though the story of the movie, much like The Vigil, it, like what the movie is saying is so tied to what the movie is doing that it's hard to separate the two and um i really i really really like candy man i thought it was very smart really emotional like it was all the things that i i was terrified that a remake or reboot of candy man would not be uh and by the time you get to the end of that movie i think it's what it says is really tragic but also very honest i think I agree with that. And there are a lot of things that this film did that I really, really liked. I loved the puppetry, mm, uh, like yeah. the, the shadow, the puppet sequences. And I loved the use of reflection. I thought that was very clever and very well done. The only issues I had with it is that I kind of feel, and I've, I've heard a lot of people say this, so at least uh, I'm not alone in it. But I, I feel like when we got to the end, it felt very rushed. And I wasn't ready for that. Yeah, like I wasn't ready to be rushed to the end. I was like, I wanted to, to explore this a little bit more. And to be 100%, and I think I might be the only one. I have never heard anyone else say this, but I just wasn't in love with the lead. I didn't really care hmm. for his performance. But everyone else in the film I thought was fantastic. But I just, there was something about him and, and about his performance that just kind of, I don't know. I don't know if I just, I don't know what it was, but I didn't like him. And I was just like, oh, that's a shame. Because I feel like if I had liked him, then it would have, uh, I could have been a little more tied into what he was going through. Rather, I really more identified more with his wife. Uh, and I really loved her character. But then there were a couple of story beats that I don't feel like really went anywhere. Uh, like the whole thing with her father, I would have liked to have explored that a little bit more. But overall, I think it was good. It just didn't make my list. Sure, sure. Um, all right, what is your number three? Well, we have already talked about my number three. Oh. And you were probably wondering uh, when it was going to show up on my list, because I'm sure you expected it to, and that is The Night House. Ah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, terrific movie. Great number three. Um, my number three is a movie that I guarantee did not make your list. <laughs> Why is that? Because we talked about it already? We or have. Because... Uh, okay. Okay. My number but three. I think I know what it is. <laughs> yeah. My number three is In the Earth. I, yeah, I knew it. Um, which, uh, like, there are a lot of Ben Wheatley movies I like a lot. And there are Ben Wheatley movies that have moments that really freak me out. Um, in the Earth is the only movie from Ben Wheatley that I just top to bottom love. And since since I recommended it to you and then you watched it and you were like, so it's all mushrooms? And then I went back and rewatched <laughs> it. And I was like, well, maybe, but probably not, but maybe. And, <laughs> you know, like Ben Wheatley just like traffics in movies that could be one thing, could be another you know, it, a lot of it is really interpretive. And sometimes that works. Uh, sometimes that doesn't. And in the earth, it totally works for me. I, I think it's uh, like unsettling and and 
gory when it needs to be and trippy and wonderful. Like I just, I, I love in the earth in the earth is one of those movies that like I've seen it two or three times now and I could go back and watch it again right now. And still, and, and I don't, at the end of it, I don't know that I could fully tell you what happens in the last 15 minutes of that movie. Um, but it, I, I think in the same way that I couldn't tell you what happens in the last 15 minutes of 2001 A Space Odyssey with any degree of, you know, confidence. Uh, in fact, when I was reviewing it, I called it 2001 A Spore Odyssey. Oh, nice. <laughs> and I, I, I think that's kind of right. You know, uh, honestly, that's not bad. That's not bad. And, uh, you know, what's funny is after I watched the movie and I was really into it, you know, I was really interested to see where we were going. And then, and when we got to the end, I was like, Oh, and then uh, I, I told you this, you know, later that mm -hmm. night, like way later in the evening, we were actually in bed and I was, I was still thinking about it. And I turned to Brian and he's like asleep. And I'm like, Hey, Hey, <laughs> Do you think they were all just all like hyped up, hopped up on mushrooms, like on like from breathing in the spores, and that's where all that came from? And he's like, "Sure," <laughs> I'm like, because if that's the case, I like it. Like I like that made me like it even more because I think it's really fa I think it's a, just a phenomenal thing when um, you know people have these beliefs that they like truly, truly, truly believe in. And then you discover that it's all just a result of an outside force, kind of like with um, Ergot and the Salem witch trials, mm -hmm. you know, and that is, a, that's a, a prevalent theory these days is that uh, these people were, were just suffering from basically fungal poisoning. And there was mass hysteria because of that. I love that. I, I just, I love the idea that something like that could happen. So then when I started thinking about that film and I'm like, maybe none of this is real. And they just were all, because they were all surrounded by these, like all of these spores, like that scene was crazy when she was trying to walk through the spores. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I actually want to watch it again because I, I want to give it another chance because I really feel like uh, I really feel like I need to like I, I just I want to because I think that there is a movie that I really like in there I just need to give it another chance yeah and yeah I, again it's just so hard to, to say with any uh, like this, this movie is going to hit everyone different because it is so interpretive it is so surreal um, you know, there are moments in the movie that I can say like, well, this absolutely happened. But then again, you get to the back end of this thing and it's like, well, some of this happened and some of it, like, you know, what is the ultimate fate of the, the, you know, the woman that guided him out into the woods? Does she become some kind of earth mother? Maybe. Um, anyway, it's, but I, I those are questions I like asking about this. I think it's really, really fun well and that's exactly why i want to see it again because i sometimes a movie like that will come up if i watch it a second time and that's i want to give it i really feel like it will and i want to give it the chance to do that because i think there are a lot of good questions in there mm -hmm. and that's what piques my interest so i also want to kind of watch it again with my theory plugged in and see if everything fits you know so Anyway, yeah. All right. Well, I mean, definitely a solid choice. I'm not surprised. I expected it to be here, but yeah. So what about your, your number two? We're the last two. Okay. Uh, I know. Okay. My number two is, um, some people might consider it a bit of a cheat mm -hmm. and I don't give a fuck, uh, <laughs> because it's my list. I do what I want. And the reason that it is a, a cheat is because technically it did come out in 2020, but it got such a raw deal when it came out in 2020. It was um, basically in the theater for like a minute. No one saw it. And then you couldn't watch it. And the only way you can see it is on HBO Max. That is that, And this film is the reason that we now have HBO Max. Because that is that is how badly we wanted to see it. So uh, that is The Empty Man. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... This film is 
so like when we first saw the trailers for it, I was like, Ugh, it looks kind of like a cross between Slender Man and the Bye Bye Man. Like that's exactly what I was expecting. And I wasn't in a hurry to see it. And then it came to the theater and then COVID and then we didn't get to see it anyway. And then I heard a lot of people talking about how good it was and recommending it. I'm like, fuck, we gotta see this movie. And it turns out that the guy who made this film, or rather, who, yeah, the guy who made this film may, had previously made a short called AM 1200, which if you haven't seen that, I think you would love it. Uh, I, I definitely would recommend seeking that out. And solely based on that, when Brian found out that that was who made that movie, he's like, okay, well now we got to see this because we, and AM 1200 is incredible. It's really good. And so I was like, yeah, I, yeah, I definitely want to see it. I was so amazed that it was the exact opposite of what I was expecting going in. It even kind of starts off that way. And there are a couple of scenes in the movie that kind of lean toward what I was expecting, but then it just goes in this, like takes a left turn and goes way out there. And I was kind of sitting with my mouth agape the entire time. It's so smart. It's so well done. I, and it has a, a bit of a long run time, but I like it because I didn't want to leave. Like I didn't want to leave what he was creating. I was in love with it. So, uh, yeah. And so if anybody out there has issue with me putting on this list, I don't really care. Cause I, if I'd had, a, if I'd had the opportunity to make a list last year, which I didn't, then, um, it would have been on there, but because of I'm giving it, I'm giving it a little extra push because I just feel like it got cheated last year. And I also think a lot of people didn't see it because of the trailer and it's kind of a shame, but there's also not much else you could do with it. It's one of those movies that you really can't market mm -hmm. uh, effectively without giving things away. And uh, so it, it just, it was kind of doomed from the beginning. So I feel bad for it. So, but it's so, so good. At least I think, did you see the empty man? I did. I did. I feel like I need to go back and watch it again. Cause my... okay, so <laughs> you're like, huh, really? I don't know. <laughs> no, it, like I, you really like it. Duncan really likes it. Like I know a lot of people really love this movie and it just bored the ever living shit out of me. Um, well, I mean, it is long. It, not only know? is it long, I just didn't care. Like, I didn't care about anything. I didn't care about any of the characters. Once you get to, you know, sort of here's what's really going on in the movie. I was like, okay, fine. I still don't give a shit. And it, like <laughs> that, that sounds more dismissive than I mean it. It's just that no, no, I, no. it's just I, that it just didn't land with me. And I need to go back and watch it because a lot of people I really respect, you among them, really like it. And I'm like, maybe I just missed something or just wasn't in the right headspace for it or something. But it, yeah, I, I, a lot of people, I really love this movie. So I, I feel like I'm the one who, who's wrong here. Well, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, JP uh, also didn't like it. He gave it like a three out of 10. Uh, actually, he hated it. I think he just, he saw it in the theater and just hated it. And then he listened to the review that Brian and I did of it because we just basically went in and talked about it for about two hours. And I was like, well, maybe if you, once you listen to that, maybe you'll like it better. And I don't think he did. <laughs> I mean, I know we listened to it. I don't think he liked it any better. So I think it just, it, I don't know, like maybe it just hits people differently, but for me, it was incredible. But uh, if, whether you like that or not, if you haven't seen AM 1200, definitely see that because we've got, um, it's, a, it's about a, a Hunter S. Thompson type character mm -hmm. and uh, it's played by that guy. <laughs> I can't remember the guy, the um, Silence of the Lambs guy. Um, oh, uh, the, Ted Levine? That fancy chap. Oh, Banshee chapter. Never mind. Oh, okay, I do like totally Banshee chapter. Thing. Oh yeah. AM 1200 is about the, it's about a radio station and this guy gets kind of pulled into a radio station and things happen. It, but it's still, it's, I definitely recommend it still, but I was getting all confused, but yeah. Banshee chapter. Oh, you've seen that? Yeah. yeah I, love, I do like I that I love that one. Yeah. That one's really good. But yeah. Anyway, whether or not you like this one and want to watch it again, uh, I definitely say check out AM 1200, but I would say, yeah, give it another shot if you get a chance. Just, uh, I'd be curious to see if anything changed uh, just because I love it so much. 
I was just part of that was probably because it was completely different <coughs> from what I was expecting. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of hit me upside the head. Um, speaking of being hit upside the head, uh, my number two uh, does not do that. Uh, now, my number oh. two is uh, my heart can't beat unless you tell it to. I knew it. <laughs> I and, was boy. I don't know what your number one is. I really don't. But I was waiting for that one to be pretty high up. Yeah, for sure. I think my heart can't beat unless you tell it to is a, a really special movie. I think it's heartbreaking. I think it's it. You know, it's the kind of frightening that Relic is, where it just it like yes, there is kind of this supernatural element, but the thing that is really scary is the real world horror of it. Of like. Yeah, like what happens if somebody that's in your family that you care about gets sick and you're suddenly forced to care about them and it totally fucks up your life. It derails your life completely. Um and it's the the performances are fantastic. It is under 90 minutes. It tells the story it wants to tell and and gets out of there. Um like I just it, it's one of those movies that's just damn near perfect and if you if you're one of those people that's going into the movie uh or going into any movie wanting you know a fast pace and action and stuff like that definitely not a movie that's going to land with you but if you are like a, a movie person like me where it's like I just want you to tell me a good story and if you can make that story resonate for days after then you've won and this is a movie that I think about almost once a day. Damn. Yeah. You know, I feel really shitty because I still haven't seen it. I have it on my watch list just because of you. You were the reason that I plan on watching it. But And I wanted to squeeze it in before my end of the year, but I just didn't get the chance. And that hurts my feelings because I really feel like it would probably be here. Yeah. Just judging from your love of it, Duncan's love of it. I'm curious uh, where it's going to land on his list. I, I think both of us are, are going to have it fairly high. I mean, obviously it's my number two. I think it's going to be fairly high for him as well. Um, yeah, it's it. It's just one of those movies, you know. It, it yeah. It, it's not like the. It's kind of like the battery. I was going to say it's not like the battery, but it is kind of like the battery in that it's a very a very quiet kind of indie movie where the horror element kind of takes a backseat to the human element. And, but that's what makes it all the more effective. And it's, yeah. it's just terrific. I can totally get behind that. And I am very excited to see it. Cause I just, I know that I just, I, I feel like I would love it. And um, so I'm, I am excited to see it that high up. So that makes me want to watch it even more. All right. What's uh <clears throat> we th- we're down to it. What is your number we, 1? We are. I don't think you're going to be surprised by this. You know me pretty well and mm. um <laughs> I don't think it'll shock you, but my number 1 is Malignant. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did that shock you? <laughs> no, 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 no. I I going into this conversation, I was wondering where Malignant was going to land and then I totally forgot that forgot about it existed. It, yeah. And so, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, apart from my love for James Wan, which is, is well known, I just was so, I got nothing but pure joy out of this film. And part of that comes from the pure joy that he got from making this film. And like any kind, anytime you watch any, there's actually a little, if you watch the Blu-ray, there's a little, like a little featurette talking to him and he's so giddy and i think that comes across completely in the film uh, i watched it again recently we watched it right around christmas and it this time i went back through and i was trying to plug in what i knew about it by the time we get to the end i was trying and i went back to the beginning to see if everything worked to see if he you know covered his ass uh, and he did. And he was very, there were some really clever details along throughout the film that you wouldn't notice the first time going through because you wouldn't know to. Mm. And then if you go back and watch it again, then you're like, oh man, he, this, it was planned so well. And just apart from that, like I said, it was just pure joy. I was 
ecstatic. I was excited. I was on my feet uh, when we got the reveal, even though I knew exactly what it was going to be by the time we got there. I was waiting for that. I didn't know ex- I didn't know what it was going to look like. And then when I got what it looked like, I just was so fucking happy. I was just like, oh my God, yes. Like he really just made my year with that movie. And I was, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I couldn't stop talking about it. It just was the movie that pushed every button for me this year and just awakened the fun horror film fan in me. And I love when a movie can do that. So yeah, I, I way, I mean, head and shoulders above any other experience I've had this year was that film. And it just, I, I can't, I still now, even now, I, I just, I love it so much. I love everything about it from beginning to end, everything, every choice he made. I don't care what anybody says. I know people complain about the tone. I don't give a shit. I don't think there's anything wrong with the tone. I think he did everything he wanted to do. And I think it worked perfectly. I, uh, the, like the crazy ass bloody action scenes. Yes, please give me that. That's what I want. And this is a film, a horror film made by a horror fan. And he is a horror fan through and through. And I don't think any of his films prior to this highlight that as much as this one. So yeah, to me, this is just a pure celebration of the joy of horror. Yeah. I, uh, that all tracks, um, you know, I'm not as big a fan of this as, as you are. Uh, I don't, I don't I know. Dis- it's fine. It's I, yeah. Fine. I, but I don't dislike this movie, which is high praise indeed. Uh, coming Especially from for me. a Juan film uh, yeah. coming from you, yeah, uh, for sure. So, um, yeah, I don't. I think the last twenty five minutes, like from the uh, from the holding cell scene on, I'm totally on board with this movie. I, I wish it didn't take quite so long to get there. Um, I just I love the fact that it took so long to get to that point because I feel like it that that's what gave you that extra slap upside the head, you know that you know, you're that deep into a movie and you think this is, you know, this, this is the pace that we're going. This is the tone that we're having. And then it just flips on you. I thought it was brilliant, but I get that. And I know that this was, this film was very divisive. I don't think there was a more divisive film this year than this one. You know, people either really loved it and championed it like I did, or, people like viscerally hated it like christian did from exploding heads Mm -hmm. and then you know there are some people who are kind of like in the middle there and of those people in the middle i've everyone that i've talked to has said the same thing and it's exactly what you said (laughs) so i think it's um you kind of fall in basically one of three camps with this film and i am just far on the i i just exalt it yeah but I don't expect everyone to love it as much as I do because I know I'm a fangirl and it's okay. Yeah, I, I, look, if, if you get passionate about, uh, you know, th- that kind of movie, then you know that's what it's all about. Is like that's the reason we do this stuff is is to to kind of really go head over heels for it. So, um, yeah, I think that's great. And, well, and usually it's funny. Usually I have at least one movie that does that for me, and typically it's a headier film. You know, it's something like Hereditary or Midsommar or The Witch or It Follows or whatever. Any, you know, those tentpole films that we've had pretty much one each year since like 2014. And that's usually where uh, I will find the film that, uh, and well, one exception to that is that the, the film that really got me the year it came out was The Devil's Candy. And yeah. that one was like, that was like an, a religious experience for me. That was fucking incredible. So there's always like one that just really just breaks out and, and, and runs ahead of the pack. And it, but it's typically something that has like a deeper meaning and more to say, this one is not that this is pure schlock. And I am okay with that. I am rolling around in that. It is fine. (laughs) So what's your number one? (laughs) My number one. All right. Speaking of kind of cheating, uh, my number one is midnight mass. Which oh, okay. You, some might argue, hey, that's not really a movie. To which I reply, go fuck yourself. 
Um, <laughs> you could say it's just a really long one. Well, yeah, I mean, it it is a seven hour piece of horror entertainment, and uh, it is. Uh, I think it's the best thing Mike Flanagan's ever done. Uh, it I has agree with that. like. It is the bar that I use to measure everything else against. You know, like all year long, I was like, is this better than Midnight Mass? Like, does this, do I care about the characters as much? Am I into the story as much? Does it make me think about like existential questions as much? And I, I you know, I like I would have, there, there was part of me that debated whether or not to make that, uh, like to put it on the list at all because... It was, you know, a limited series on Netflix. But also, it's like, if I leave it off, how do I leave off the best horror thing I saw this year? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, it just, it only made sense to, to no, put it I, in that spot. If it makes you feel any better, I really wanted to put it. I did. And the only reason I didn't was because I was like, I guess it's not really a movie. But... Uh, that is ex that's how deeply it resonated with me as well is that i was fighting i fought myself i was very close to putting it on just because it was it meant that much to me yeah yeah so uh and yeah so i'm you know i just think it's it, it's just terrific you know it like it it is it, it's not perfect in the way that, like, I think My Heart Can't Beat Unless You Tell It To is almost a perfect movie, but also it is just doing so much all at once that I can't not put it in this slot, you know? Like, I just, like I said, I just, I don't know that I've seen anything, certainly not this year, that I've seen anything that, that's better as a piece of horror entertainment. And if I don't see anything else good this decade... I'm kind of okay with it because I think it's that strong. Um, it's definitely that strong. Absolutely that strong. And you know what? This is your list. You can do whatever you want with it. That's that's what I say. Right. But um, I, I'm, I won't I won't take that away from you because it is amazing. It's amazing. Uh, do you have any honorary mentions that you want to make before we wrap her up here? I do have a couple. Um. I can just name them off real quick. Sure. Um, let me get to that. Sorry. Some movies that didn't quite make my list and, and we haven't talked about uh, that I think are also really good. Uh, Sun is one. No mm -hmm. One Gets Out Alive is another. Uh, Blood Red Sky I thought was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, the Old Ways, which I've heard no one talk about, but that's a really good Mexican exorcism film. Not in the traditional exorcist kind of exorcism this is well it's called the old ways so it's very much in the old way <laughs> and very good and the power which i thought was very powerful it oh. I, I don't think it was necessarily surprising but uh, i think it kind of went where you expected it to go but i i also thought it was very effective Fair enough. I would uh, give honorary mentions to Vicious Fun, which I thought was just that. Uh, is a really terrific, fun, good time kind of horror movie. Um, the Queen of Black Magic, mm, mm -hmm. which I thought was was very good. Almost like that was probably going to be my Asian horror <laughs> representation on the list until the medium came along, and it was like, oh no, no, the medium is. <laughs> Like that, that movie is legit. No, um, I really did enjoy that one. That is a subtitled film that I did watch. Um, yeah. and it was, it was very good. Yeah. That movie gets raw. Mm -hmm. I like it. Uh, and, uh, I would also, uh, shout out the columnist, which I thought was, uh, speaking of subtitles, uh, I think it's Icelandic. Um, but it is uh, a great movie about a, uh, an online columnist who gets a bunch of shit posting in her in response to her articles mm -hmm. and so she starts tracking down and murdering all the shit posters yeah there were two movies that i really wanted to watch this year that i didn't get a chance to squeeze in one of them was the columnist and the other one was the stylist yeah and i heard really good things about both but i never got a chance to watch either of them but i those are ones that i'm going to be picking up you know 
I don't want to miss them. So um, I'll yeah. be watching them. But yeah, I heard good things. The col- the thing I like so much about the columnist is it starts with that premise. But then it kind of asks the question of, well, then what's free sh- free speech? Like, does someone have, if you have the the freedom to write a column, what is different about the freedom to say crazy bullshit about the person writing the column? Ah, oh. and and it kind of digs into that of like, well, is is either of the, like one of those things more maybe more erudite, but is one illegal? Or is it immoral? Or like, what is what makes it exclusive of the freedom of speech? And you know that is actually a timely topic, <laughs> considering how things are on the internet. You know, used yeah. to before internet, people would put things out there, and the only way you could say things, but not really that other people could see. Like you could send letters to TV stations or send letters to a newspaper and sometimes the newspaper would print things that people said most of the time they wouldn't though so you're just basically screaming into the void with your opinion on said piece now with the with everything being online if you want to make a comment about something everyone can see it which i would imagine that to the creator of that it hits a little harder knowing that everyone can see what other people are saying. I right. don't know. Um, and, and especially if you, if you start saying things like, well, this person's a pedophile. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's yeah. You know, like at, at what, <laughs> right. But, but at what point, like, is, is it illegal to do that? And if so, why? I mean, if it, it, it's, it's an interesting question. And the, I, I don't know that the movie answers it necessarily, because I don't know that there is a real answer to it, at least not not an obvious one. But it definitely traffics in that question beyond just like, well, people said mean things and then she goes and fucks them up. It's like, well, yeah, but it also asks the larger question of, well, okay, but what gives her that right but not them? You know? Right. Like, like it, it, is the murder a legitimate response to something that some dickhead wrote online? And but it, it's an interesting movie. The Columnist is is a really, uh, it, it's fun too. It, it like it goes places. It, it's got some good gore moments. Yeah, it's a a really solid movie. Um, um cool. Uh, well, two things I, I I will throw out there real quick, just because I'll I'll hate myself if I don't. Uh, one is uh, a Quiet Place too. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's a really worthy sequel, and I enjoyed it. I mean, it feels like a complete experience to me. If you watch the first movie and then the, uh, immediately follow with with the second movie, I think they blend really well, and it feels like a complete experience. I like that. It didn't make my list, not because I don't think it's worthy of making my list, but just because it w- it would have been probably just like in my top fifteen, probably somewhere. And then uh, one more was we need it was this was a really late watch for me, and that is oh uh, we need to do something. Mm-hmm. I enjoy that one a lot. Good Pat Healy, for sure. Oh, my God. He's so good. I re- and I even said when we were watching that, I'm like, I want to see more of him. Like, why doesn't he do more? Yeah. And if he does, he might. And it, and I just don't see it. But I really just enjoy him. And I think that he uh, he was the totally the best thing about that film. But Yeah, f- for sure. I My problem with that movie, I, I think that that's a, a real solid pick. Um, my problem with the movie is I think it kind of, by the time you get to the end of it, I think it's run out of some steam. Um, as, as far as like where you ultimately land with that movie, right. I was like, ah, okay, I guess. Um, but I agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, but, but yes, I mean, if, if you're just looking for a horror movie, uh, we need to do something is, is a, a super interesting one. Um, all right. Well, we are, uh, over our time, but you know. Once a year, we'll allow it. Uh, uh, but this was super fun. I'm glad that we did a, a top 10 special. I, we'll have to do this ne- next January as well. Yeah, looking forward to it. All right. Uh, in the meantime, then, we'll be uh, we'll be back next month with our regular format again of just uh, talking about random shit and some movies yeah. that we watched. And we're going to be talking uh, about what you're watching. Yeah. Instead of what did you watch in order. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Well, uh, thank you as always. You were the best. I love you dearly. You talking to them or me? You. Oh, yay. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> right. And we'll see. You can be talking. To them. I love them too. I love everyone. <laughs> I love everybody, especially you. Uh, old Lyle Lovett song. Um, all right. We'll see everyone. I love Lyle Lovett. <laughs> All right, I'm pulling the plug on this. We'll see everybody in a bunch. <laughs>